On this episode, the spotlight shines on the arts and culture space in Johannesburg as we visit two of the city's historically significant landmarks that saw the likes of many South African legends walk through its doors. We start the trip downtown. Downtown Music Hub has been refurbished and recently relaunched in Johannesburg. Founded in 1978, the DTMH is also a record label that has in its arsenal legendary South African artists. We're here at the relaunch of the Downtown Music Hub in downtown Johannesburg, number 62 Hoad Street, where many musicians once worked and now it's opening up its doors for the new musicians who want to create new legacies. Let's go have a look. <laughs> We are gathered here at a place which I usually call the, the gateway of South African musicians' success. This building where we're situated now um, and the studios that are situated in this building were the studios that were used by most of the legends um, in the music industry in this country. Um, your Don Lakers, your Yvonne Chaka Chakas, the Mahatma Hotela Queens, um, the Brenda Fassies, the Hot Stick Papooses, the Steve Kekanas, who's the MC tonight. So anyone who's anyone of certain age in this music industry used downtown studios. So the heritage value is immense. Um, and also it's important to stay here because we're trying to gentrify the city. We're trying to bring people back into the city. Um, we've got neighbors, um, Maboneng, Apsa, who've spent you know, quite a bit of money into making sure that the city is a safe place for people to come. So we want to play our role in that. And you know, like I said before, it's a heritage site. Um, and the best thing you can do with heritage sites is to refurbish them and celebrate them and let people come and celebrate them with you. Um, I mean, a lot of artists die paupers. Um, they're not appreciated as one would assume they should be. Um, what are some of the programs that the Downtown Music Hub has adopted to make sure that artists not only receive financial support, um, but also um, all the kind of backing that goes behind being an artist in South Africa? Okay, I think it's important for artists or anyone aspiring to be an artist to understand that it's a music business at the end of the day and you need to function as a business when you want to become an artist or function in any area of the music production value chain. You need to understand your um, intellectual property rights because that's the genesis of it all. That's where you know you conceptualize your music or whatever else that you're planning to broadcast. You need to be able to understand how to protect yourself and protect your intellectual property rights because once you've protected those, you're able to then generate income from that and make money from that at a later stage. So we've, brought, we've had programs here where we teach people about the business of the music uh, industry so that they understand how to operate in you know small things like reading contracts you don't just sign something because you think you're going to be a superstar you need to understand the content of what that is and you need to understand whether you want to be with an independent or you want to be with a major and what the consequences of that are you need to understand who's managing you you need to understand legal issues you need to understand that this is a cyclical business you know there are days there's periods where you earn a lot of money and there are periods where you don't earn a lot of money so you need to know how to manage um, your finances. Having said that, they are, there have been some unscrupulous people in the industry um, hence some of a lot of the sad stories that uh, have been told but we're trying through our education program with partners to educate people and give them the support they need to become successful in this business. <laughs> a place where the Don Luckers, the Brenda Fussies, the Lucky Dubes created legacies that are going to last for generations. To me it's very important, um, you know, when I came in, into the industry, uh, the, these facilities were not really running. Um, I must say, as I, as I did the tour, I told people that I was here when I was 19 before I could play music. So for me, this relaunch is very important in the sense that these studios are acoustically the best studios in Africa. And so, coming from my, back, uh, my background of being a recording artist who perform live, I know this is where you will capture the real sound. Uh, most of our people have been disadvantaged for so many years and 
we couldn't, they couldn't actually afford to come and record in a facility such as this. And uh, I'm glad to say that uh, we're revealing the state of the art facility, which is the best on the continent. On the continent, I repeat. Well, it's great to see downtowns coming alive. Uh, tonight's been a wonderful presentation of some of the talent that we have. Uh, I'm really excited to see the studios uh, coming back to life and, and really being world class and able to support uh, international artists as well as local talent. I think we'll make a huge impact in the heritage space. We'll make a huge impact in terms of the gentrification of the city. We'll make a huge impact in terms of starting conversations in the music industry with different stakeholders and being a connector and just really being a home um, to musicians. I think we're going to do great things with, the, with this facility. The Johannesburg Art Gallery is commemorating its 100th anniversary this year. It's celebrating with six exhibitions made up of pieces from the gallery's own collection. How the gallery came about was as a result of a very passionate lady, uh, Florence Phillips. She was a South African who at the time, around the turn of the century, the previous century, married one of the Rand Lords, Lionel Phillips. And uh, she visited Europe a lot with him, so she was exposed to you know, what was going on outside of South Africa. And she wanted to, in her words, um, educate the f colonial Philistine. And she set out to, to, ha to have this building built. In the beginning, she didn't have enough money. She was raising funds from various landlords and the city of Johannesburg at the time. And um, finally, when they got the money together, this building was completed. Well, not completed, but the plans of the architect, Edmund Lachens, was partially completed. What happened then is that in the 40s, um, the wings were from the same original Lachens plans were extended. And then only in 1986, the building was really completed with the making use of the footprint of the original architecture, but it was redesigned by uh, Mayor Pinar and Fernerte. Uh, Florence Phillips started collecting art for the gallery before it was completed. So the actual foundation collection goes back to 1910. Um, and everything that was purchased was European and white. In the 40s, the first work by a black artist was purchased, and that was the work of um, Gerard Sokoto. Um, subsequently, there was the national government in 1948, and again, no work by black artists were purchased. Only in 1971 was uh, work by Saole purchased as the second work by black artists. And ever since then, the policy, the collections policy, has changed to such an extent that it is now all inclusive and completely democratic. Currently, you can see six exhibitions when you come to the Johannesburg Art Gallery, all in celebration of the centenary. We have tried to take a little bit of all of our collections out for the public to see, because we often have complaints. Some people want to see the contemporary work, some people want to see the historic work, other people want to see the modern work. They, there's always complaints. And with these six exhibitions, we try to be as representative as possible. So the first exhibition is, a work, is an exhibition of work um, by South African artists from 1940 to 75. It's really based on the two schools, Rock's Drift and Poly Street. Then we have a small, smaller exhibition which is entitled Encore and that we used to put all the popular work um, up. So there's no uh, very important or academic um, background for this exhibition other than the curator's choices of what people always ask for, and that is the Penisiopus, Mel Melancholy by Penisiopus, and Gerard Sokoto's Yellow Houses, and the Picasso, the Chuck Close, various very uh, liked um, works. There's a Salvador Dali as well. An exhibition of uh, traditional African art objects is all also on view. The objects vary from knob carries to headrests to vases and pots and things like that. There's also an exhibition by the pre-Raphaelites, um, 
very interesting historical um, collection um, with important artists such as Rossetti. Um, and uh, I really encourage people to come and see that because it's a part of history that is very special to a lot of people. There's another exhibition entitled Moments in a Metropolis which really focus on cities, cities across the world and the movement and the people of cities through the world but focusing on Johannesburg and all of these works are made out of, out of um, paper. It's photographs, etchings, drawings, things like that. So the, the exhibition is not just limited to its thematic um, concentration but also the, in terms of medium because we have a, a print collection here at the gallery which is the one that we wanted to showcase through that exhibition. South Africans in general are not um, that well educated when it comes to arts and culture and I don't think that's as a result of apartheid because I was never taken to a gallery when I grew up. The first time I ever came to a gallery was this gallery and then I was in my matric year. Um, I think we do lag behind in terms of education because that's the only thing that is going to motivate people to come. And that's one of our aims here at the gallery is to educate both children and adults in terms of um, arts and culture. The Johannesburg Art Gallery is the best attended fine art gallery in Africa. Um, although it's, it's negligible because um, if you compare us to European museums, then it's still a very small amount. Johannesburg specifically um, is considered to be a business capital more, but this, this gallery um, ha owns pieces by people like Picasso, Monet, Gerard Sokoto, all of the well-known names, William Kentridge, and it's the only place in Johannesburg where people can come, well, in the country really, where people can come and see the, this kind of collection of European as well as African work.